Hey, this is Anthony Metivier from MagneticMemoryMethod.com, and today we're going to talk about memorizing the Greek alphabet. Now, there's a lot of ways to go about memorizing stuff, one of which is to pound it into your head with rote learning, and another way is to use a dedicated memorization strategy such as a memory palace. And so that's what I'm going to talk today. And what are memory palaces? Well, memory palaces are mental constructs that you build in your mind based upon familiar locations, locations you know, such as your home, the office where you work, school, library, movie theater. All of these places work really, really well as memory palaces. And essentially what you do is you build stations inside of these memory palaces and Stations are the places where you leave information. So you use visual encoding to make something highly memorable through a process of association, which we'll talk about throughout this video. And then you leave that material along a journey that you've created through the memory palace. So for instance, if you were to use your home, then a room such as your bedroom would be a station and then the kitchen would be a station and let's say the bathroom is next to the kitchen, that would be a station as well. I call these macro stations because they're entire rooms. They're much larger and you just use them for one piece of information. So a macro station is an entire room. Now a micro station might be elements within that room. So for instance, you're using your bedroom. You're not just using the entire room to store a piece of information, but you're using the bed, the bookshelf, the bedside table, even the lamp could be a little station where you place a piece of information. It's a bit more advanced. Beginners really want to begin with macro stations rather than micro stations. But depending on your imagination and how you want to work, be, feel free to work at a smaller scale. Nonetheless, I, re, I generally recommend people start off with mic, macro stations. So basically, there's some principles about how you're going to create associative Im imagery that you leave at these uh, stations, whether they're macro or micro stations. And the principles are this, essentially, that you use large, vibrant, and colorful images, and that your images are intense, they're exaggerated, and they're filled with action. And there's a sort of controversial rubberneck principle that I come across quite a lot in my teaching about memory palaces and using them to memorize uh, foreign language vocabulary and so forth. And that's people think that the examples I give are excessively mm, violent and Quite frankly, the reason that I do that is because it works. And you don't have to engage in such cartoonish acts of extreme energy, so to speak. But as you'll see in these examples, they're they're quite they're quite shocking. And that's the point. It's the it's either memorizing the Greek alphabet quickly, or you know, struggling with it with. Uh, with what I call the hammer of rote learning. And you know, I'm known as a controversial memory theorist and memory technique specialist and so forth, and that's one of the things that makes me controversial is this kind of no BS approach to getting the job done. So I personally recommend controversial principles, and I call it the rubberneck principle because it's like a car accident on the side of the highway. You have to look at it, and it's unforgettable for a long time. It has an effect, and that's what we're looking for when we are using memory palaces to store associative imagery that will bring back to us the information that we want to memorize, which in today's video is the Greek alphabet. Now, I'm going to give a number of representative examples in this video, and I want to point out something that will be very obvious is that they're from my imagination. And it's very, very important that, you know, to me, that I can use G.I. Joe and the Transformers because they're an essential part of my childhood, and I still, you know, recognize them when I see that a new movie has come out, and they're just a personal mythology, right? So they may mean nothing to you. Uh, and th so these examples are really for representation only. To truly experience memory magic, you need to consider these as a model and then create your own. Some of the things that I give in my examples may resonate with you, and by all means, use them. However, the more personal you are in your memory work, the more magnetic these images are going to stick in your mind. And, you know, that's the beauty of the whole thing in mnemonics and memory techniques and memory tricks, whatever you want to call them, is that you are getting to play with information using your personality, yourself, who you are, your experiences. So... Take these examples and model them for yourself. Always taking care to make sure that the images you use suit you. 
Now, another point that I want to make before we get started is that it's very, 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 very important to relax when you're using memory techniques. No one I've ever seen ever teaches this in any of the memory books. I could be wrong, and I would love if you would email me at learnandmemorize at zoho.com if you ever come across someone talking about relaxation in a memory book. Because I think that relaxation really is the key to success in all memory work. When people say that mnemonics or memory techniques don't work for them, they say, well, my mind is different, which is something that we hear a lot. Um, you know, the mind really isn't that different. The difference is, is how capable we are of accessing our inner resources, our imagination. And one of the best ways to do that is just to simply be relaxed. Relaxation helps overcome many things. So for maximum effect, spend a few moments in meditation and ideally use pendulum breathing and progressive muscle relaxation as well. These are things I talk about in other places. And you know, it's not just about having our imaginative capabilities brought to the forefront, but it's also about overcoming negative ideas about our memory. So being relaxed really is just helpful overall, and it's a great thing to have in life. So one thing I'm going to do now is just tell you a little bit about my memory palace that I use for the Greek alphabet. And it's my grade 10 high school. I went to all kinds of high schools, but one in particular in grade 10 is particularly useful because of the way it was structured in a kind of square with two levels. And for whatever reason uh, it was built this way, you could get into the building from the street on the one end, on the main floor, and then on the other end you could get out onto the street on the second floor, and that had to do with it being built on a hill. So you could go through this memory palace, well, this high school that I've now turned into a memory palace, and actually go from one floor to the next floor and still exit out onto the street. So that helps me be able to follow two very, very important magnetic memory principles. And these are not crossing your own path when you go through a memory palace and not trapping yourself in a memory palace. You always want to be able to get out and add more stations and you want to be able to do so without crossing your own path. And this makes the memory palace journey so much more powerful, so much more useful, so much easier to use and to organize the information within it when you just spend a few minutes in preparation to make sure that your journey through the memory palace is sound. Now, in the case of the Greek alphabet, we're going to need 24 stations. So if you want to play along, pause the video and think about a place where you could come up with 24 stations, keeping in mind this principle of macro and micro memory palaces. It may be very difficult to find a single location with 24 individual rooms. However, if you're a doctor or a nurse working in a hospital, that might be possible or... You could do as I've done, which is to use a high school and have micro stations inside some individual classrooms. And as you'll see in the gymnasium, I also use micro stations within the larger gymnasium. So let's get started. And I'm going to give a series of representative examples of how that I have memorized the Greek alphabet. The first letter is A, which is alpha. And this is very similar to English, so, and the word alpha is very prevalent in our culture, so there isn't a whole lot of work to do when it comes to this letter alpha. Nonetheless, I think it's very important when you're memorizing an alphabet that you do include images for every single one, and this partly has to do with the principle of not crossing your own path in a memory palace, because if you think, well, I don't have to memorize alpha because... You know, it's, it's just so prevalent a word in in my language. Well, then you 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 have a broken journey. So, even though some letters in many languages are are very very easy, nothing really to memorize, do them all anyway. Or at least this is how I work. So, I see the wrestler and the actor Dwayne Johnson, and he's actually a typical alpha male, which I deliberately sought out. And I have him standing, knocking Alf, which is this furry little alien from TV back in the day. I don't know if uh, you remember this guy. He had a great voice. Um, he's knocking Alf to the ground in a wrestling move. And, of course, this is completely ridiculous. But I have these two concepts. The concept of the Alpha Man and someone who actually has the name Alf in it. So Alpha comes back very, very easily just by visiting the outside of the front door of the high school and seeing a wrestler Alpha Man tackle Alf to the ground. 
The next letter is beta, and this letter is B in ancient Greek, but it's more like a V sound in modern Greek. Now, it's also a well-known word in our culture, and of course alpha and beta together provide the source for the word alphabet in English. So again, not much of a challenge to memorize, but nonetheless, we want to incorporate it into the journey. So I see Warren Beatty shoving a B-shaped cassette into an old Betamax player. I guess I'm revealing again how old I am with ALF and Betamax and all that stuff, but nonetheless, you will have your own version and it will mean something to you as you figure out how to memorize beta. Now, at Heather's locker, I have gamma, and this is kind of a tricky letter because it can sound like an N on different occasions depending on where it appears in a word. So, for instance, it can make the NG sound, ing sound, as in our king. And all of that depends on where exactly it appears inside of a word. Now, to remember this, I see Dr. David Banner from uh, The Incredible Hulk with the gamma bomb he invented, and he's placing a king's crown on it as it explodes. And the crown has these letters, um, kappa and, and so forth, that allow us to, allow me to memorize exactly how that it sounds when it's preceding these particular letters, which we will get to these letters in a moment. Now, the next station is the janitor's office door, and there we have delta. And in this case, I see a small d, this d that has a little mark at the top like a flame, as a kind of bomb flying into the side of a Delta Airlines jet. Now, again, this is a perfect example of this kind of violent effect in, in mnemonics. Uh, it's not a very pleasant image to think of, uh, of this, but I want to remember in this order comes the letter D, delta, and this really, really triggers it for me. So number five is Tommy's locker, and that's the letter epsilon. And as it happens, across the street from me, there's a hair salon, and uh, the young people who work there always make an epic mistake with Tommy's hair. This is now building a little bit of a story here, and uh, I won't tell you what Tommy does, but his reaction involves Epsom salt, and it's totally unforgettable what he does. So Epsilon is very easily memorized. The next is the front of the gym entrance door along this journey through my high school, and this is Zeta. And here I see Catherine Zeta-Jones, the famous actress. She's curling her hair with her finger to remind me of the shape of the minuscule. Minuscule is the word for uh, lowercase letters in Greek. And uh, while Zorro is making this same shape on her chest with his, his sword, and he's shouting Zeta. So that's a, a great image, uh, very impacting. The next is directly inside the gym entrance door. Uh, there's two gym entrance doors or exit doors, as the case may be, and this is the first. And here we have Eta. Eta, I see Mario from the video games, um, Super Mario, with a plate of H and N shaped pasta, this small, unusual N here, and he's shouting, How am I gonna eat all of these eight? So, this very, very uh, audio, audio, audio oriented image in this case. The next is the east side basketball net, and I've just sort of you know, figured out w which direction this would have been based on my knowledge of the high school and the city that it, it uh, lives in. Well, high schools don't live anywhere, but the, 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 the city that it's in, this basketball net in the gymnasium was on the east side of the building. And here I have Theta. And, you know, I'm really capitalizing as I go through the alphabet uh, on things from my life. And when you come across coincidences, which you will come across more and more, the more you work on mnemonics and memory skills, memory tricks, etc., you're going to find these uh, are just incredibly in your mind coming and snapping and popping uh, faster than you can use them, really. So you want to focus on them and really build the skill of coincidence in your memory work. So... Here, the thing that comes to mind is Omar Epps bouncing this strange O-shaped ball and failing to force it into an O-shaped hoop. And it's a really hilarious effect. And, you know, he says they ought to make a bigger theta. Uh, and so we can just focus on that, make it really large and strange, and getting this sound theta linked with the shape of the letter is quite easy and again there's a bit of a coincidence that there's a basketball hoop in this particular station i didn't plan that but i'm using it and i'm sure that in any other room i could have found some way to find a circle and create an associative image that would also help bring this back 
to my mind when I go through the recall exercise. Now the next letter is Iota, and this is pronounced something like Iota. And I see Yoda, the guy from Star Wars, with a full staff in one hand, which is this full eye, and a broken one in the other for the minuscule. And he's banging these together and saying the letter as if doing so were some kind of spell of reparation that he was gonna he's gonna restore this minuscule letter to the unseal, which is the capital letter. The next letter is Kappa, and here we are at the west side basketball net, and here I see Fred Caps, the magician, trying to make a cup of cappuccino disappear, but instead it lands on his shirt, making a sort of XK-shaped stain, and uh, if you happen not to have a magician like Fred Caps at your fingertips the way I do, you most certainly do have the caps lock key or, you know, a cap of from a jug of milk or anything else so long as the image is large, exaggerated, and filled with zany action in your mind. And you may have a way of bringing back the sound kappa that doesn't involve uh, something from English, such as what I'm doing, uh, in, in suggesting with using the cap locks key or a cap from a, from a bottle. You don't necessarily have to do that, but it's a very convenient way when you can find a cognate sound object image image coordination. Um, but again, I'm, I'm using the opportunity in my own mind that there happens to be a magician named Fred Caps, and that I, I put him in a situation that allows me to memorize that in this part of the alphabet, we have the word, the letter, Kappa. Next, we have Lambda. And it's very simple to see a lamb with the shapes of these letters for its legs. And, you know, instead of ba ba, this lamb is saying, Lambda, and he's doing this while he's playing Fortinda with Freud, which is the hide and seek game, as we call it in English. And all of this compounds together this sort of lambda. So, in effect, by doing this work of compounding, I'm giving myself more chances to recall the shape of the letters and the sound of lambda. The next is inside the gym entrance door, the second entrance slash exit. And this letter is mu. And I see the minuscule letter in a white dress next to the unseal in his tuxedo. And they're proceeding to get married, these two, interrupted only by an emu that's blocking their path. So this is not exactly mu, but it's enough. The emu is enough to bring back that sound mu. The next is outside the gym entrance door and now we have new and here i see the, uh, the poet ezra pound he was this crazy dude shouting to a row of newbie poets that they're going to have to make it new if they want to make it in the world of poetry and uh, you really do so if you're a poet listen to uncle ez Next, we have Dino's locker, and of course, I remember Dino very well. It's pronounced C with a very, very short X, and it sounds, you know, almost like ecstasy without the E at the beginning or the ta in the middle. So it's C, and this letter is easily memorized by seeing a hamburger and a snake popping ecstasy pills. Uh, again, very, very personal images. You'll need to figure out what works for you to recall the sound and the visual shapes of these letters. Moving on, we have Mr. Sheely's classroom door, and here we have Omicron. Sounds like a villain from the Transformers, doesn't it? Well, if you recognize this word in connection with the Transformers, Omicron is actually a colony established by the good guys, and it was later uh, destroyed by the bad guys. And I see this war going on outside of Sheely's door. Now, before continuing, I want to make a little point about how that we quote-unquote, enter Mr. Sheely's classroom, and a little note about using classrooms and rooms in general. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of this video that one of the principles of the magnetic memory is that we don't want to cross our own path. A lot of people have asked me over the years, you know, how can you enter a room and then leave it without crossing your own path? And actually, that's a very, very good question, and it's simply answered by not en not actually entering the room at all, not actually walking into it in your mental journey. Simply stand at the door and peer into the room without actually walking into it or through it. And you'll still create a continuous mini journey in the room by, so to speak, casting your eyes in a semicircle shape without actually having to walk into it. So this is a very, very simple technique. And you still don't want to cross your own path when you're wandering through it in your eyes, but it overcomes the idea of, you know, walking from place to place and winding up crossing your own path.
So moving on and you know back to our regular scheduled alphabet, we've got Sheely's blackboard and here's a micro station. So I'm actually using the blackboard because it can be drawn on. Very easy to imagine an image stored there. And this is P or Pi. And you know it's so widely understood this word that it's pretty pretty easy to come up with an image for it. And in this case I have Peter Pan flicking peas at Mr. Sheely with uh, one hand and tossing pies at him with the other. And the reason why I've uh, done this is because, you know, people, some people say peas, some people say pie. So I've learned and memorized both by using an image that has both peas and pie in it. Next, we have the window in the classroom. And uh, here is row. Actually, it's kind of got a little row sort of feeling to it. And here I see Robert De Niro in the movie Ronin paddling with the two letters that we see here as he sings, row, row, row your boat. And uh, these letters are very unusual and they make for very awkward paddling. So the image is quite extremely exaggerated and the action is very, very strange. Next, we have the uh, next side of the window, and here we have Sigma. And, you know, I draw across, uh, draw sometimes the same character several times, and here we have Sigmund Freud back in the game. And in this image, he's drawing this uh, letter of Sigma on the frosty glass window. And Sheely, while this is going on, is bawling and crying on about his ma, his mama. So by having Sigmund Freud and Sheely crying about his mama, we have... Sigma. Now it's worth pointing out that with some of these letters I'm creating more than just images. I'm creating little vignettes or small story sequences that bind the letters together. And I did this a little bit in the gymnasium as well. This practice is not strictly necessary because the journey from station to station binds the images you create perfectly well without linking them through a kind of story. However, there is a compounding effect when you add layers and connections together that you know when you focus correctly on amplifying the colors and the size and the vibrancy of these images you'll strengthen the string of information as a whole but that's a very personal sort of element that you need to experiment with some people have much more greater success by isolating the images and others like to link them together in a sort of narrative way uh, I think that both works. It just depends on what the nature of the information happens to be. And really, when you're working in a relaxed state, you just go with this stuff. Kind of go with what comes first, and you can troubleshoot it later if you need to go back and amplify certain things, simplify certain things. This is all incredibly easy to do once you're rolling. So uh, as you're working, you're in a relaxed state, just kind of go with what, what, what comes up. And uh, you can do this mentally uh, all in your mind, or you can write these things down as you go along. You're going to want to write them down at some point because you're going to test yourself and you want to be able to recall with accuracy or you want to be able to check your accuracy. But that's a methodology that I talk about in other places also on this YouTube channel. So next we go on to Tao. It's not exactly like the Tao Te Ching, in terms of how it sounds, but it's close enough, so I jury rig it with the Tao Te Ching, and I see that the cover of the book, the T, I don't really need to worry about, but but this neat little shape, the small shape, I see this sinking into Mr. Shili's skin uh, as a form of branding, so that this image sticks in my mind. Next, I have the map. He had a wonderful map on his classroom for Upsilon. And this really is an oops moment because the girls from the hair salon are back again. And this time they're giving Mr. Sheely a very bad hairdo in the shape of this sort of V shape by pulling it higher and higher, causing poor Mr. Sheely no small amount of distress. And he's really glad that his job is done in this memory palace as we move on to collect the rest of the alphabet. And here we're going to move to where Dave's locker used to be, and we have Phi. And we just simply see Dave, I see Dave, paying a fee through a large hole in his locker that's exactly like this shape of the letter fee. And it's pretty dramatic because not only does Dave not know if he's ever going to get his money back, but he's worried too about whether or not he's going to get his hand back. So there's a sense of risk and danger in this image that makes it, you know, memorable. So 
22 is staircase door and here we have he and you know it's kind of like saying he you with sandpaper in your mouth with the sound of he and you know you can pronounce this letter just by practicing in the mirror and if you see a bunch of spit on the mirror then you're pretty good uh, that's exactly what i see here actually is myself loaded with chinese food in my mouth uh, that looks like sandpaper and it makes me cough the sound of this letter and you know this is an example where this image has a bit of a conceptual element to it but it's what my mind brought to me and again i suggest you go with what your mind brings to you as well taking sure to make everything large and vibrant and filled with explosive action so when i'm you know coughing and sneezing in this image it's not just <laughs> a chew it's berkle it's really really sorry i started to speak german there for a second it's um really really explosive and and really big sneezing and this Chinese food is flying everywhere in this image and he so now we get almost to the end of the alphabet we have C now depending on where you're studying this sometimes this has a little bit of a P sound C at the beginning so to memorize this I envision a fish with a candelabra and he's hunting for the Pacific Sea which of course he's never gonna find because the Pacific is an ocean Again, that's a little bit conceptual, but it works for me to memorize the the sound of this letter is C, and it sort of looks like a candle, candelabra sort of shape. And now we're at the end, my friends. We have omega, and it's another word that's quite om uh, quite commonly known in our culture. And to memorize it, nonetheless, I see Omar Sharif playing horseshoes with Mega Man from the world of video games, and so omega is produced from combining this Omar Sharif with Mega Man. And of course, as always, this image is extremely large, bright, vibrant, colorful, and the action is exaggerated, bordering on frenzy. And it's just, it just takes a second to really add these elements, and the effect that it has is simply magnetic. Not only that, but it's a lot of fun. So that's the Greek alphabet in one memory palace and 24 stations. Some of them were macro stations, some of them were micro stations. Now that you've seen how I created my memory palace journey for memorizing the sounds and some of the images that I used to do it, you should be able to do the same to memorize the Greek alphabet. And once you're done creating your own personal imagery, you should be able to mentally walk through the entire alphabet and correctly pronounce each letter both forwards and backwards. And I recommend that you do go forwards and backwards as you are going through rehearsal recall because that will strengthen your association incredibly. It's kind of weird that we can't just automatically do that with the English alphabet either, but elsewhere I have a training about memorizing the English alphabet backwards as well, which is really like skipping a rope with the mind. It's a cool, brief, very, very wonderful, refreshing mental exercise you can do any place, anytime. And it sounds great, the alphabet backwards, and it amuses all your friends. Uh, and they'll be jealous and they'll want to know how that you learned to do this and you can use the method that you've just learned today to memorize the English alphabet backwards should take all of four minutes now I want to remind you to work in a state of relaxation it's really really critical to maximum success and relaxation accomplishes at least two things being relaxed will make it easy for you to come up with the imagery you'll need to infuse this this abstract new information with associations that are meaningful to you this will be much more automatic and zero resistance if you take a few minutes to get more relaxed before that you begin the other thing it will do is relaxation will eliminate any frustration apprehension doubt or negativity you feel when it comes to using your memory so many unproductive attitudes about memory abound that it can really be easy to let these things derail us. But relaxation simply melts all of that away. So thank you for watching this video. And I hope that you're now ready to leap forward and get really serious about using a memorization method so that you can learn a new language and recall its alphabet, but also its vocabulary with ease because this method can be used to memorize vocabulary as well. And if you'd like more help, here's what you can do right now. Over the years, I've developed a complete, practical, and language learning oriented memorization program containing great ideas you can use immediately to improve your vocabulary memorization skills and experience a boost in fluency as a result. 
In my full home study program, which I call How to Learn and Memorize the Vocabulary of Any Language, you get more than four solid hours of video training and 700, well, more than 700 pages of training, checklists, worksheets to increase your vocabulary in any language you may be studying and boost your fluency as a result. And in this course, you learn the best ways to build memory palaces for learning and memorizing foreign language vocabulary using a simple three-step formula. You'll also learn a simple method for memorizing the genders and cases of different words. You'll learn the most important words to focus on so that your boosts in vocabulary are meaningful and instantly useful in conversations. You'll also learn to systematically divide words into component parts so that you'll not only know what each word means after you've learned these words, but ultimately you'll be able to guess what new words probably mean even if you haven't heard them or read them before. It's an interesting effect that happens in the magnetic memory method. You'll also learn how to put together a knockout vocabulary memorization schedule that will give you dozens of new words every time you practice. And there's much, much more in this video course. So please visit my video course using the link below in the video description and watch the free promo video there and the free lesson it contains and join the course and start benefiting right away. I personally guarantee that you'll be delighted with this program and that it will help you memorize dozens of words every time you study. Try it for an entire 30 days. If you're not satisfied for any reason, I insist that you send it back to me for a full refund. The method I teach in this course, called the Magnetic Memory Method, has been used by thousands of language learners, many of whom previously considered themselves the owners of a bad memory. Yet they've made real strides in acquiring new languages based on the advanced memorization skills they've learned from my method. So to thank you for watching this video, you can enter a coupon code GREEK during checkout and this will grant you a 50% discount on your one-time investment in this vocabulary memorization method. Remember, anything someone else has done can be done by you as well, as long as you learn how. This home study program, How to Learn and Memorize the Vocabulary of Any Language, will give you a series of step-by-step -step formulas to build a successful network of memory palaces that will allow you to memorize and recall foreign language vocabulary at will. Order it today.